All hail the king. Here's your look at the new Star Ace Kong Island 12 inch soft vinyl figure. Kong here comes from the new soft vinyl figure series, product code SA9002. We're also going to be looking in this video at the normal version of King Kong. First thing we're going to do is the same thing we always do on this channel. We're going to figure out how tall King Kong stands. So taking the Ultra Measuretron, measuring it right to the very top of his head and stopping it right there. There we go. The figure from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head stands exactly 12 inches in height, which in centimeters, switching that over right now, you're looking at 30.5 centimeters tall. A big thank you, by the way, to Star Ace for taking the time and sending this over so we could have a look at it on this video. There, uh, There is an instruction guide. Well, it's not really so much an instruction guide because uh, Kong comes in two different versions. The one that we happen to be looking at right now is the normal version. The normal version, as you probably can see it right here, comparing it to the limited edition, the limited edition comes with a display stand, also comes included with a smashed helicopter that you can put into Kong's hand. The normal version doesn't come with the display base, nor does it come with a helicopter. And you'll also see as well, Kong has a relaxed hand and a closed fist. The limited edition release has a closed fist and the open hand. So even like the hands are unique to one another here. Now, as I said at the beginning of this review, this is from the soft vinyl figure series. What you're essentially getting here is a vinyl statue, not a figure. So if you are picking this up or planning to pick this up for yourself, hoping that there was going to be some posability on Kong, sadly there isn't. Um, this is a sub subline, if you will, that Star Ace is producing, where it produces a series of super sculpted, super detailed figures or statues, if you will. But there really is no posability on this guy. There's no arm posability. In fact, the only thing I noticed that did seem to move on him, and it's simply probably just the way that they were, they connected everything together, was Kong's feet. It seemed like it's a separate piece that you can sort of swivel back and forth. But that's actually the only posability that's on this entire specimen here. And it's certainly what a spectacular specimen this is, capturing Kong from his Kong Island, Skull Island, uh, appearance here. Now, he does look fantastic. Like I said, he's very detailed. I don't really want, and I hope in the course of this review, I don't want to diminish people from being interested in picking this one up simply because it doesn't have the posability. I hope myself as well that at some point Star Ace is also going to be able to license a fully posable version of Kong because seeing how good they've done here, I would really love to see him, them release him in something that I can actually move the arms, move the head. Speaking of the head, let's have a look at King Kong here. Yes, let's talk a little bit about this stunning head. To think that somebody would have meticulously gone in and carved, sculpted all of this into, my guess is probably like a clay, and then they would have cast the vinyl figure from this. It's absolutely stunning. All the individual strands, as you can see, of the fur, all separate and not unique to one another. Paint of, uh, certainly, of course, goes a long way on this as well. And speaking of paint, or not necessarily speaking of paint, but more so the coloring, I want to just draw your attention, as they're probably drawing their attention to you, 
the piercing orange irises here of Kong. They're staring right at you. In fact, when I've moved the head a couple of times looking at this statue, I almost feel as if the eyes are following me. And that's a credit to stars to what they've done with the eyes sculpt here. And really, like the coloring, the sheen over top of the eyes, just gives it a little bit of life. Certainly a lot more life, again, as you move that head side to side. Am I the only one that feels as if Kong is staring right at me no matter which angle I'm looking at him? <laughs> You're looking at it too now, aren't you? You can see all the individual scars that they put all over his face. This is a battle-ravaged Kong, as you can see. There are lots of scars and scratches on his lips. Very furrowed brow, but you can see all the carves and indentations into his flesh. Like I said, the paint really, really shines on this. This could simply have been a black and white statue, and I think would have been just as successful. But it's really the little nuances of color that makes this pop. Um, you can see, hopefully you can see, various different shades of color that have been added into the fur. It's not even quite brown. In fact, the more you look at it, the more you see shades, slighter variations of the shade of brown, varying from things with orange. I almost feel like at times I'm seeing like almost a greenish tint here in like the armed area of the fur area in his arms. Whereas up here is kind of keeping more to like warmer colors, like browns and a little more orange browns, a little bit of reds in there also as well. But the hands are further down from there, you can see, it gets a little bit more cooler in the color scheme. The fur also becomes a little bit more lavish, a little fuller, if you will, than the thinner areas of the fur right around the face here. Of course, Kong's war wounds are ever more apparent here on the front of his torso, where you can see big claws, just claw marks, gouged into the front of his torso area here. The face, of course, the front torso around the abdomen area and uh, pectoral muscles here of Kong are kept to the gray coloring that we would see in the movie. Also, this said to be same for the hands. Speaking a little bit about the hands, too, you can see that the gray here is not just sharing the space by itself. There's a little bit of that additional yellowish green also added in there as well. Probably likely due to some of the foliage that he's grabbing, he's eating possibly is carried over into his fingers, but look at the intricate level of detail here into his fingers. You can see how even like the knuckle joints here have the folded over little flaps of skin, like a human hand would be. The fingernails are also given a slight sheen. You can see the little bit of the light reflecting off the black nails on Kong's hand here. We spin the statue around I keep wanting to really call this a figure, but it really is a statue. The back also gets a share of various different colors kind of dancing among one another. Some browns, some oranges. Again, you've got some grays added in there as well. Around Kong's buttocks area here as well, you get that gray treatment. And of course, as we get our way further down to the bottom, I'm glad that they added actually brown on the undersoles of his feet. Of course, the feet, the toes themselves of Kong, are kept to the same gray that are also on his hands. But I like the little added touch of adding a muddy undersurface because again, he's gonna be walking on a terrain. Kong doesn't sport shoes, nor would I imagine shoes be large enough to fit this primate. So again, you've got basically like areas in which he's just stomping down on muddy terrain. Uh, I guess intentionally as well, you can see some cracks there developing on the undersides of his feet. I don't think that's actually paint. In fact, as I run my finger across it, it actually feels more like the sculpting. So they would have gone in, and of course Kong, putting all of his weight on his feet, you would imagine he would have developed blisters and little cracks and splits in his flesh here. Being that he is made out of soft vinyl, in theory, in theory you can squeeze him. I really would not not recommend this, but I just want to show you to the type of material that they used for it. He feels hollow. I mean, he feels relatively light. It's not certainly something where you would be comparing this to a resin statue, for example, because a resin statue, material-wise, would be so much more heavier than vinyl. It's smart, actually, that Star Ace went the route of using soft vinyl. For starters, you can get just as much the detail that you would in a resin statue. You don't worry how, about things having to break, things about being fragile which is also one of the problems that using resin also causes. And also, it keeps the price point down. 
you can get Kong at a very affordable price versus if this guy was created, say, in resin, you would probably be looking at a figure or statue closer to about three to four hundred dollars. By the way, near the end of this review, I talked a little bit about the comparison between using vinyl versus resin. How does that translate to a price point? Well, places online, for example, like Sideshow Collectibles, is selling the standard release of King Kong, the very same one that we looked at in this vid video review, for $139.99 US dollars. Here in Canada, of course, being Canadian myself, I have to think about the conversion rate. That works out to be about 190 Canadian dollars. Now, if this wasn't vinyl, let's just use the argument that this was resin, expect to pay about three to $400 for the same type of statue. It's smart that Star Ace is using soft vinyl because from a collector's standpoint, you're just getting as much detail as what you would get from a resin statue at about a half price point. And I think that's smart that they went that route, producing in soft vinyl. Now, I know what you're thinking. Star Ace are known for high quality, high sculpted, posable figures. There's a bit of a disconnect for the fact that Kong here isn't posable. Well, I felt the same way as well. Getting Kong out of packaging, I knew what I was expecting, but it was certainly a disappointment to find that he didn't have any posability. But then I thought to myself, well, I pick up other statues from various other companies and I don't expect posability from them. Simply by having, them under, having Kong here under the banner of Star Ace, I don't think should expect, or there should be an expectation that he has posability to him. If you look at him simply just as a statue, he's absolutely gorgeous. I definitely would love to see what the limited release version of Khan looks like. He's probably gonna look about the same as this one. Of course, he's gonna have the helicopter in his hand and he's gonna have the muddy terrain di display base. But either way, I don't want this to be a deterrent because he doesn't have posability. If you look at it solely just from a statue standpoint, Kong looks stunning. And just because Star Ace normally produces articulated figures, I don't think should rule out the possibility of adding this one to your collection, especially if you're a fan of Kong. Today we were having a look though at the Star Ace Kong Skull Island. This was a stunning 12 inch soft vinyl figure of King Kong. Wanna go back and have a look at some of my other reviews of Star Ace pieces? don't blame you. There's a playlist just for that. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will guarantee you or somewhat guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. And as always, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.